For over 125 years, the old chapel has sat at the center of the University of Massachusetts Amherst campus. With its iconic exterior of granite and sandstone sourced from nearby quarries in Pelham and Longmeadow, Massachusetts. But behind the pretty facade is a building that is a literal shell of its former self. The large auditorium lies empty, devoid of chairs or other objects of a bygone era. Gone are the days where the old chapel greeted visitors with its two arched entryways. Gone are the stacks of books, administrative offices, and students studying. The clock rarely works and the bells only rang on special occasions. After lying vacant for nearly 15 years, the old chapel is merely an afterthought to many of the students attending the university. But it wasn't always this way. Well, the old chapel was conceived by Henry Hill Goodell uh, back uh, in the uh, 1860s. Uh, Goodell was one of the uh, first four faculty members employed by the university and eventually went on to be uh, one of the university chancellors, although in those days they called them presidents. And um, he saw the need to have a library and it was to be a stone or brick building. And they laid the, uh, the cornerstone in the fall of 1884 and the building was finished by 1886. Like all state projects, it ran over budget and they had to appropriate another uh, $5,000 to finish it. During the first 20 years of the 20th century, the old chapel was one of a handful of buildings on the Massachusetts Agricultural College grounds. Aside from South College, built in 1885, and some small structures that no longer exist, the old chapel was the only building inhabiting what would eventually become the center of the UMass campus. It was because of its central location that the old chapel and the grounds surrounding it was the place to gather and spend time. Students used the building to do homework, take tests, congregate for meetings, and take part in athletics outside. As the years progressed and the university grew in enrollment, the old chapel became an established and recognizable structure on the campus. As the years passed by, the old chapel continued to play an integral role at UMass, but some of its original uses and contents were relocated to newer and larger facilities. Over a period of two decades, from the mid-1950s to the mid-1970s, the UMass Amherst campus underwent a tremendous amount of growth, expansion, and change. A more contemporary and modern jungle of concrete and brick replaced the architectural styles of the earlier part of the century. Buildings such as the W.E.B. Du Bois Library, Herder Hall, the Campus Center and Student Union were all built during this period. Despite becoming overshadowed by larger and more contemporary buildings, the old chapel received a new lease on life when the UMass Minutemen Marching Band, led by the late George Parks, became the last inhabitants of the structure. Nearly 100 years after its construction, the chapel served a new purpose and would come to be cherished and remembered by those who spent time there. There was, between classes, there was always, always a fair number of, of alumni, uh, not alumni, but students uh, in the building, uh, just hanging out, doing their homework, studying, doing things for the band, whatever it was. Um, so there was always somebody to help you with homework or somebody just to talk with or somebody to go have lunch with. Um, that was a big thing. I think more than anything, the Old Chapel represented um, a place, a gathering place for the band. There would be parties in there. There would be um, the band fraternity and sorority would have its have its uh, ceremonies in there. Uh, we would have rehearsals in there. Um, you know, there were you know there'd be uh, slumber parties in there. I mean, just, just all the different things that we did in the building. Uh, each one contributed to that sense of place and belonging. It was a place where, especially as you know college kids are starting to come of age where you know you'd have people having their, their sometimes even their first kisses in some of the practice rooms so a lot of these kinds of different activities all really created these great college memories uh, for a lot of the band members uh, and for the fact that the chapel itself was so iconic for the campus that it's on all the postcards it's on all the brochures it's on all the t-shirts on everything um, it, it just really cemented that more than anything it was a place um, where people spent a lot of time. You know, it just became a place where they spent a lot of time and it became a second home. In addition to spending large amounts of time in the old chapel, the band was also dedicated to maintaining the 100 plus year old structure to the best of their ability. Despite the band's best efforts, 
a large and potentially dangerous situation had developed above them in the bell tower and would eventually cause the vacation of the building. We were uh, realized that the, uh, that the tower uh, was in some structural distress. Uh, what was happening is that the stone veneer was separating from the, uh, from the brick core of, of the tower itself. So uh, we realized that something had to be done. Uh, so there was a campaign to raise money to, uh, to rebuild the tower. In 1997, work began on the rebuilding of the old chapel's tower. We literally disassembled the entire tower down uh, to, the, uh, to the clavier room and numbered all the stones, palletized all the stones, and then uh, literally re uh, rebuilt it with a new reinforced concrete core. Since the building's closure in the late 90s, the university has been unwilling to raise funds for the interior, causing many to wonder and wish what will happen to the historic structure. Many people have many different ideas, and so I think that's part of where we've all gotten bogged down. But it should be something that appeals to the entire university community. Something so that Old Chapel can still be part of us and not just be sitting there by itself, alone and abandoned, people walking by and not knowing what's going on in this poor place. While the university makes a commitment to building its future, many people feel that it also must commit to preserving its most iconic link to the past. I do think, in addition, it is important that we preserve the architectural uh, history and the academic history of the campus because it's very important. The fate of the old chapel seems as sealed as the building itself. It is a symbol, both of the university's past and a present system that has failed to ensure the building's future. The first floor of the renovated Old Chapel is envisioned as a reading room and exhibit space for the library's special collections and university archives. Here, permanent exhibits will tell the history of the university, rotating exhibits will highlight our collections from across campus, and traveling exhibits will be open to all. The second floor will provide a much-needed high-quality meeting and event space open to the campus for classes, events, and symposia and to the public for weddings and special occasions. Many plans for reuse of Old Chapel have been debated. One recent study explored the concept of constructing additional space by connecting Old Chapel with the Du Bois Library. A connection between the chapel and Du Bois Library underground could provide more exhibit space, facilities for conferences and programs, and even additional office space. Such an addition may provide easier access to the chapel itself by providing a ground-level entrance. 